What lens should I take on a photo safari? This is the Wild Eye Podcast. Hey everybody, my name is Jerry, I'm from Wild Eye. And in this episode, I'm just going to explore the question that we get very often at the office. And that is, what lens should I take on safari? Now, it's a very similar question to how long is a piece of string, because there is no right answer. In the past, I've spoken about questions such as what should my ISO be or what should my shutter speed be? And I normally answer those with questions as well. Well, I don't know what your shutter speed is going to be because I don't know what you want to create. I don't know what your ISO is because I don't know what lens you have. I don't know what focal range you want. So the question of what lens should I take, again, it does come back to what kind of images do you want to take? And in this instance, what is the destination you're shooting in? The broad answer, and I'll, I'll go a bit more granular now, but the broad answer is in some places like East Africa, you need more reach because it's wide and open. Often you have sightings at great distance and you might need more reach, four, five, six, even 800, right? Whereas something like gorillas, and I've got that on my mind because I'm going there in a week and a half, two weeks, where gorillas, 70 to 200 is kind of the max that you would need. You can go wider. But, and this is a big but, you can use any lens, any focal range, in any destination. You can make it work. You can go to the Masamara and only use a 2470. Your portfolio is going to obviously lean in a certain direction then, and you're going to get certain types of images. Doesn't mean it's wrong. You can go to Gorillas and shoot with a 400 2.8. You're going to get very different images very different to the normal, and you might have to track that thing up the mountain. But you would get a very specific type of image. You would get images that are very much detail-orientated or abstract. So the question of what lens should I take will always depend on what is it that you want to create. So let's get more granular. The first lens that I would put in my bag, and I do put in my bag, always, always, regardless of where I'm going, Gorillas, Masamara, Sabi Sand, South Oangwa, Manapul, Svalbard, even Iceland, is a 70 to 200. The 70 to 200 2.8 is the first lens that I recommend you put in your bag, always. Always, always, always the first one. It's very versatile. You can shoot landscapes with it at distance in the Masamara. You can shoot portraits of gorillas, portraits of animals, lions walking right close to you. You can do detailed shots in Iceland with uh, of the water, of the water and the rocks. It is ridiculously versatile. You could even, and this is something not many people do or even try, is if you have a scene on safari of, let's say, for example, a pride of lions under a tree, you could turn that lens 70mm into portrait orientation and shoot a bunch of portrait images overlapped and create a panel of it. So you can still get that wide look and feel. Obviously, there's a 7200 f4, but the 2.8 is my go-to because when you get to places like South Luangwa or Sabi Sands, Madikwe, where you can do evening game drives, you're shooting with a spotlight and you need, in those instances, you need the 2.8 to suck in more light right? You need it to suck in more light. So my go-to lens always is a 70 to 200, regardless of where I go. Now I'm shooting, uh, currently I'm shooting Olympus and their 40 to 150 2.8 is the equivalent of 80 to 300. That's my go-to. So I've got a little bit more reach than a 200, but I've also got a little bit less on the wide side from 70 to 80. So 70 to 200 needs to be your go-to. That's what I would recommend, and I do recommend that to my clients. If you can afford the 2.8, do it. If you can't, get the F4. It is still worth it. Now, the next lens that you need to pack, and this will depend largely, again, not on the place you're going to, but what do you want to create, is currently I'm leaning in all my photography towards the wider side, landscape-type photography, scenes and subjects, 24 to 70. Those two lenses, 70 to 200, 24 70, should in my mind be the two lenses you always have with you, always. Now, the reason why I'm kind of into the wider stuff right now is yes, I was in Svalbard and I did photograph polar bears and, and, and almost said muskox. That's on my mind, I want to go there. Uh, and reindeer. And in Iceland, I always shot, uh, obviously shot some landscapes and waterfalls. I'm finding that with a wide lens, I'm composing 
better. I'm thinking more about it. Because the wider you are, the more elements you will see visually in the frame, which means you have to think a bit more. I think a trap for a lot of wildlife photographers is they take the biggest lens they can, they slap the subject right in the middle, boom, and then crop a little bit afterwards. That's lazy photography. And quite honestly, you're not going to grow like that. You might get some pretty cool images for Instagram because Instagram loves the close-ups of the big cats and all that. But it's not going to make you a better photographer. 70 to 200, 24, 70. When you shoot 24, 70 in any scene in any place in Africa, and even, even Great Bear Rainforest, or Borneo, or wherever you go, right, Pantanal, the 2470 will give you the opportunity to create scenes with subjects in it, rather than an image that's about the subject with a little bit of scene behind it. So the 2470 range. Now, a lot of wildlife photographers are scared to shoot wide. They don't want to shoot wide. Why? Because it challenges their composition. Then they think, okay, cool, no, 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 I want to get a wide angle lens, so I'm going to go for the extreme. Nikon, 1424, Canon, 1635, that kind of ranges, right? Those are amazing lenses, but unless you know what you're doing with it, you're not going to walk away with award-winning images because wildlife photographers have this idea that you need bigger lenses all the time to create amazing images, and that's wrong. It's so wrong. The wide-angle stuff will make you a better photographer. The 16 to the 35, 14, 24. You get lenses like the 28 to 300, which is normally, I think it's f5.6 normally. Very versatile. Very versatile. So you need to understand what it is that you want to create. If you want to go to a place like gorillas, for example, and you feel you have already got a good collection of gorilla abstracts, of animals and environment and that, then take your 300 2.8 or rent one. And then you can bang out those close portraits, just the eyes, just the thumb, just the nails, just the mouth, whatever. And you can create a different type of image. But if you don't know what you want to create in the place that you're going to, your lens choice is always going to be difficult. The, the next one, so 70 to 200 would be my first one. 24 to 70 would be my next one. I'm currently shooting a, what is it, a 16 to 50 equivalent. In Olympus, it's an 8 to 25, but the four third system duplicate or doubles up the focal length. So it's an, a 16 to 50 f4. Love that range. It's super wide up until a point where I, my, my um, 80 to 300, my 15 to, sorry, let me try that again. I need more coffee. My a 16 to 50 real terms is great because it goes from super wide to 50 and from 50 to 80 is a very small gap that I'm missing and then I have 80 to 300, right? Now, for those of you that want the bigger lenses, which ones should you take? So people always ask, oh, I've got the, I've got the Sony or Canon or Nikon, whatever, 400 2.8. I think I should take that. But I also have the 150 to 600, right? If I had to tell you which one to take, I would say take the 150 to 600 because unless you have a very clear thing that you're shooting for, that lens is going to give you more, um, more, more, more opportunity to shoot different scenes, right? Now, what I just said does contradict a little bit of what I've said in the past where a fixed lens is a good thing. Why? Because it'll challenge your creativity. But unless you are open to that challenge, it's going to frustrate you. You're going to want to get closer or further or zoom in or zoom out. A fixed lens, 300, 400, 500, 600, even a 200, F2, right? Those lenses are great to shoot, but you need to be open to the challenge that it presents to you. If you're open to it, your creative voice will start talking with you and you will come up with good stuff. But if you want to just document a place, if you go to the Masamara for the first time, take 150 to 600 because it gives you different options to shoot. If you've been there once or twice and you know what you want, then challenge yourself with something like a 400 F, uh, F2.8 or a 500 F4, 600 F4. That's when you challenge yourself. So lenses like your 100 to 400, 80 to 400, 150 to 600. I think there's a 200 to 600. There's a 100 to 500. Those things are great all around. So if you want to take three lenses on Safari, 70 to 200, number one, 24, 70 or wider if you're willing to shoot it, as two, and number three, something that gives you versatility at the higher end of the focal ranges. Those three for me would be a go-to. Now, depending again, and you see the theme here, depending again on what you want to create, 
maybe a macro lens. I always have my, my Olympus macro lens. It's really small, so it's very easy to take along. But I always have it with me because in camp, on drive, during coffee stops, sometimes there's magic. I remember Medikwe once we stopped for morning coffee and it rained the night before. And all the spider webs around us lit up as the sun fell on the webs, which was covered with drops. It was amazing macro photography. So I always have that with me as an extra. So I'm open to that. But I will always decide when I'm going to a place, I want to create this. And then my lens choice plays out. So for example, uh, I'm going up to Gander now and then straight from there into the Masamara. Masamara, river crossings, hopefully. Now, I've been in a lucky position where I must have seen thousands and thousands of river crossings, literally, right? This year, I might want to try something different. I might only shoot on the two extremes. I might shoot a 16 mil and an 840, which is a 600 with a 1.4 converter, right? I might only do those two. It can be challenging because sometimes you might not be able to shoot one of them and they might challenge you in a certain way, but... I like the challenge. I like to try and push my creative voice. Shake it up a bit. Where are you going? What you want to create? Those are the two questions that I will ask you if you ask me what lens I should take. It's, it's an interesting thing. I've, I've, I've mentioned this in the past, but one of the, I had a client, ooh, must be like 2014, 15. It was when the D4, Nikon D4 just came out. And she arrived and she had two D4s and if I recall, two D700s or D750s, one of the two. No, 750 was not. So it must be 700. And the one, so there's four cameras. It had a 600. The next one was a 200, 400. The next one was a 70, 200. And there was a 24, 70. Great range of lenses, but not all at the same time. Why? Because it cripples your creative voice. The creative voice doesn't have to work. You have a scene, anything pops up, a leopard in a tree, a lion walking past a car a river crossing. Now suddenly you're faced with, I can use any of these lenses, which one do I use? You've already missed the shot just by thinking all of that. Instead of having one, possibly two cameras and shooting what you have, working within those creative constraints in order to challenge your creative voice. Lens choice is an important thing. It really is. But the bigger question I think should be when you ask yourself this is what should I create? What do I want to create? What type of images do I want to make? And this is also the reason when I do private guided trips, where I would say to someone, okay, cool, if we're going to, let's say, Mana Pools for the first time, or even to Iceland, right? Go and Google pictures that you like from the place that, that inspires you. Because then we can reverse engineer this and say, okay, cool, if you want to create XYZ image, you're going to need ABC lenses in order to make that happen. You can't go to the Masamara expecting to take images of, of lion eyeballs, but then you take a 16 to 35. Because then you're going to die. Because if you put a 16 to 35 close enough for a lion to take his eyeball, he's going to bite you, right? So reverse engineer what you want to create and go from there. Best choice. I think also the travel aspect has to be, coming, has, has to be mentioned in that if you're going to travel internationally very, very far, like people from the US traveling to the Masamara or to South Africa or wherever we go, is what are you comfortable traveling with? Is it worth, depending on what you want to create, is it worth traveling with a 402.8, which even though the new tech is smaller, it's still a beast of a thing to travel with, considering you got a camera bag with two other bodies, three other lenses, chargers, hard drives, laptops, binoculars. Is it worth traveling that? with that thing, because <laughs> having a lens that can shoot 2.8 doesn't mean you have to shoot it at a 2.8. More often than not, you won't be shooting it at 2.8, and if you are, you need to question why. Why? Because more often than not, if you shoot 400 2.8 only, even 70 to, 70 to 200 2.8 only, you might find that your images start looking a similar way, where the animal's faces in, in, in focus, everything else drops off. Sometimes you want more. Maybe shoot it at f5.6. Sometimes shoot it at f8, depending on the closeness of the subject to you and what you want to create. See that theme coming back? What you want to create, it's a big deal. If you shoot a 402.8 and you shoot it at f5.6 and you shoot another lens 405.6, it's the same. 
yes, we can argue sharpness and you can give me all tech specs from labs where they tested the things. I get it. The only win, the, okay, not the only win, but the big win for lenses that have wide open apertures like f2.8 or f4 is when you focus on an image and track things, right? The focus happens at the wide aperture, which means the, the, the front of the lens opens wider which makes it easier in low light to lock onto something, and then it, when you shoot, goes down to the size that you selected. That's the win. That's the win. So in a 400 2.8, you can shoot later into the day during darker times without struggling with tracking and focus. So there we go. Just some thoughts, guys. We're, we're heading into a very busy safari season. I mean, as we speak, I think I'm one of the only guys currently not on safari. Andrew is in Mashatu, Trevor is in Uganda, Michael's Mala Mala, Johan's in, God, where is he? I think he's in the Delta. Michael Apple Sammy is in the Mara, Matt is in Amboseli. Um, so everybody's out. It's great. So with safari season coming up, look at, go and question yourself. If you don't know how, get in touch and I'll try and help you. What are the type of images that you want to create? Then look at how am I going to create that in the place that I want to go to? Because I mean, if you go back through all the podcasts and stuff, if you go to the uh, Serengeti or the Masamara versus Madikwe or, 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 or Sabi Sands or Mala Mala, right, you can use the same lenses in both, but certain lenses will just be better for the different areas. And that's what matters. What do you want to create and where are you going? And then reverse engineer back to the lenses you have to pack. But let's loop this back. Always pack your 70 to 200 or similar lens first. Always. And then go from there. Anyway, if you have any questions, guys, get hold of me, jerry at wildeye.co.za. That's G E R R Y at W I L D dash E Y E dot C O dot Z A. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to help. Otherwise, good luck with your photography. Happy packing. And um, as always, thanks for your time. I'll see you in the next episode. My name is Jerry. I'm from Wild Eye. Have a good one. <laughs>